Good morning. Welcome to Covenant United Methodist Church. Those of you gathered here in the sanctuary, those of you who are joining us online. My name is, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ken Fell. I'm a retired pastor in the conference. And it's with sadness that I'm here this day. Our pastor and her family are gathered in Pennsylvania, mourning the sudden death of her mother. And our prayers this day reach out to them. But we have gathered here to be the body of Christ. There are a couple of announcements that I'd like to call your attention to. The flowers on the altar are for the wedding anniversary of Steve and Laurie Augustino. And the bowl was created especially for this service by Mary Church and Ann Church. I think I have that right. There's a picnic coming up in the September 10th, the first Sunday after Labor Day. Um, there'll be a special service here, there'll be a picnic, and there'll be a concert. I invite you to check out the details in Covenant Connection. Dick, am I forgetting anything else? There we are. So with heavy hearts this day as we remember Pastor Dawn, 
let us gather together and prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. I'm Frank Johnson, and I will be your lecturer this morning. Uh, if you can remain seated and hear the invitation to worship. We continue our worship series on change. Last week, we were reminded that the Creator God made us for change, creating an amazing physical body, a curious mind, and a willing spirit course of our lives. It is what makes life vital. It is what makes life vital and is the bedrock for our spiritual path. You'll never know what is possible unless you pop the top of that container of imagination. When we check out what's inside and take a look under the hood, all kinds of adventures can begin. Our scripture this week invites us to remember the baptism of Jesus and the message that we as followers of Jesus are changed constantly from the inside out. Transformation does not start with the action of change itself, but a willingness within our spirits to lean into the life path that is calling us. Please stand as you are able and join me in the opening prayer, which will be on the screen. Life-giving God, you refresh, refresh us from, from the inside out with your water of life and spirit. Open us to your presence within us 
and help us to see how you are reshaping our spirits each day. Calm our fears and animate our spirits for this time of discovery. Amen. And please join in the opening song, the words for which will also be on the screen. you to remain standing and to greet those around you with the peace of Christ. Now, do we have any, I don't see any youngsters here. Yeah. Well, we have young at heart, right? <laughs> well, the theme being change and changing from the inside out. I think I can say that um, 
life is always changing, right? <laughs> There's always ups and downs. Um, I don't have children here to talk about all the emotions with change, but <laughs> thank you. So, um, one more. Okay. So I've, I've got some. I guess we'll go ahead and do it. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, I've some colors here, and I've kind of associated them with some emotions. When we go through change, sometimes we feel fear. So purple could be a good color. It's, a, it's kind of a dark color, but um, fear can be a big part of change, right? And sometimes part of change, and I've experienced this the last few weeks, is blue, a little bit of sadness. Yeah, it's a happy blue, but tears are good. Sometimes we have to let those tears flow when we're going through change. Sometimes change can make us angry. <laughs> right? Red. <laughs> Red, and it's a good color. Um, and it's a good thing to learn how to be healthy about that, right? Stomping our feet, maybe finding a safe person to talk to. Um, but we have to let that anger out even when we're changing, right? Otherwise, where does it go? It, it only builds up. It's not good. Another color, it's the possibility of newness and um, joy. Change can bring a lot of joy. I know when we brought our puppy home, there was a lot of unknowns. That was a big change in our house, right? And I'll show you pictures of her sometime. Her name is Lucy. But she brought a tremendous amount of joy. <laughs> um, we're always laughing at her. She's really fun. But um, we had to learn to adapt to this new dog. <laughs> She's a year old. Um, but she brings a lot of joy to me every day. And change. She's changing every day. And we might find that she's gotten into something we don't want her to. So that can make us angry. <laughs> but she's a great dog. Green's my favorite. It's your favorite? That's great. And no, no, not green. She's a Boston Terrier, so a little black and white. Very cute dog. Uh huh. And um, another color, sometimes even change can bring a little bit of disgust. Let's think about when you're sick. <laughs> it's, it's a change in your body. It's not always fun when you're sneezing and snotting and feeling gross, <laughs> right? And it can be a little disgust, um, but it's part of that. And I, I think also with a new dog, you know, you got to potty train them. There's some disgust there. Um, <laughs> but it's sometimes part of that change process. Um, so yellow. So, <laughs> so with all these colors... Um, is, is the wonder of who we are. And God made us to have all these emotions um, for a purpose. And isn't it lovely that we have a Jesus who understands us and has all those same emotions? It's amazing. So, mm -hmm. oh, I, I accidentally grabbed pink. Pink is very pretty. <laughs> Maybe hope. Maybe hope. We have a lot of hope when we, we go through change, too, right? That'll, mm -hmm. so. So as you are being creative and contemplating all these beautiful emotions that God gave us, know that they're there to help us with change. And then we're all here for each other in that change. Um, we can be all these lovely things, and we can hear all those lovely things. And we can pray together about all these lovely things. So let's pray. God of infinite love, we thank you that you created us to be human beings with all these emotions. You created this world to be ever-changing. You created us to be able to walk through and get through change. 
but you promise to always be with us, that we're not alone. Help us with the emotion of change, all the good that comes and all the difficult parts. We ask you to walk with us, keep us close, and remind us that we are here for each other. We pray all of this in your name and all of God's children said, amen. I'm now going to offer a contemporary reading from the poem Learning from the Lake by Gina Beer. Um, as an introduction, Walter Wer Walt Whitman once wrote, I am large, I contain multitudes. Each of us contains a variety of emotions, as we just heard, each of which has a place in the change process and the capacity to lead us to joy. Gina Beer writes that life is never static, Sadness and grief orient us to loss and impermanence. Anger can be protective until it takes over. Listen to Gina Bierne speak about finding a place for all of our emotions in her poem, Learning from the Lake. What makes watching the lake so mesmerizing is its state of constant change. It does not, as far as I can tell, resist the whipping of its waves by the wind the transition to ice in winter. Sometimes it sparkles, diamond strewn. Sometimes it hypnotizes me with the intersecting patterns of its ripples. Sometimes the depth of its stillness fills me with a quiet sense of awe. Different facets of its character are revealed by every change of light. To me, it is never anything but beautiful. And always, I am aware of a sense of constancy and calm in its depths, no matter how its surface is interacting with the world. Please remain seated and join in the Song of Preparation, which will also be on the screen. scripture is from the Message Bible, Mark 1, verses 1 through 15, which is also known as the Message. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Message, begins here, following to the letter, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Watch closely 
I'm sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John the baptizer appealed, appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and as they confessed their sins, were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field hunters. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama, to whom I'm a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice, you are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, this same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and nights, he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. This is the word of the Lord. It's with mixed emotions that I stand here this morning. It's always a privilege for me to be a part of worship here at Covenant Church. And it's a particular privilege when that participation allows me the opportunity to preach. But the reason that I have that opportunity this morning brings me great sadness. I join you in lifting prayers for our pastor and her family as she mourns her mother's sudden death. Many of us have experienced similar situations within our own families, and we know what heaviness lies upon her heart at this time. Last week, Pastor Stewart embarked upon a series about change that was created by Marsha McPhee. Now, I'm familiar and appreciative of Dr. McPhee's work. Before I retired, I would attend the week Music and Arts in Worship seminar at Lake Junaluska, where McPhee was usually one of the leaders. Now, for this series that we're going through now, McPhee has selected an animated character that serves as a focal point for each week's service. Last week, it was Gumby. This week, now I can't get it to stand up. There we go. <laughs> this week, it's Riley from the movie Inside Out. Now, Dawn did email me the resources for this week, for this sermon series. And let me quote directly from Dr. McPhee's instructions for this sermon. 
I quote, our feature animation this week is Inside Out, the story of a little girl, Riley, who is going through big changes in her life. Flesh this out more in your sermon. <laughs> End quote. Now, when Pastor Stewart emailed me this material, she also wrote in the email that she found this movie very insightful and planned to use it extensively in her sermon and that I should feel free to do so as well. And that's all well and good, except for the fact that I've never seen this movie. <laughs> Apparently, it's available on Amazon Prime, but I don't subscribe to that service. So I'm a bit stuck this morning. Now, from the descriptions I read, this movie is about the complexity and the emotions surrounding change. And Jolene, I appreciate what you had to say earlier about that. But beyond that, I haven't got a clue. So I'm going to ask you all to join together in, I'm not going to ask you to lie, but can we fudge it a little bit? And when Pastor Stewart returns, if the subject comes up, just say, oh yeah, Ken talked about Riley in the movie Inside Out, but truthfully, I didn't understand a word he said. And just let it drop at that. So with that, I'm going to go in a different direction. At the outset of the service, I admitted that I was retired. I'm a senior, and being a senior means more than just getting a discount on ticket prices or being able to, off, to order off the senior's menu at Denny's. It means that I can do and say what I want and I don't have to worry what the SPRC thinks, or the DS thinks, or the Bishop thinks. And I really don't like the idea of preaching about change. As a senior, I've already experienced most of life's major changes. Marriage and divorce, kids, kids who became teenagers, <laughs> empty nest, kids who return home for the second time, kids who leave for the second time, job changes, the transition from working to retirement, then from retirement to being an interim, and then back to retirement. Been there, done that, bought those t-shirts. The only major change I've got left in my life surrounds my mortality. And frankly, I'm not looking forward to that very much. <laughs> so having admitted to you that I'm old, I'm going to throw out a reference that most of you won't get. And if you do get it, you'll be embarrassed to admit that you're as old as I am. I'm going to hearken back to Rocket J. Squirrel and Bullwinkle J. Moose and Peabody and Sherman and the Wayback Machine. Now, if that means nothing to you, get your phones out and Google Rocky and Bullwinkle. But try and do it discreetly so it doesn't bother the people sitting next to you. And don't let me see that you're doing it. Look up occasionally from your phone and at least pretend that you're listening. We're going to have Peabody set the Wayback Machine to the 1990s. 30 years ago. For in the 1990s, there was a show on PBS that I'm fairly certain none of you ever watched. And the reason I'm certain is because 20 years ago, I used that show in a sermon. 
And I got blank stares. <laughs> and I finally just stopped and asked, have any of you watched this show, seen this show? And there was only one lonely hand. So I'm going to assume that none of you have ever seen the Red Green Show. Am I right? Oh, I have two, three. Red Green was a man who lived in a fictional small town in Canada called Possum Lake. And the other characters on the show were men who, like Red Green, were members of Possum Lodge. And since most of you, except for three, have never seen the show, I'm going to help you experience it this morning. So I want everyone who identifies as a male to stand up. If, you, if you're a man, stand up. <sighs> I see two of you. Two of these, two men online, watching online, who think just because they're not in the sanctuary, they don't have to stand up. You have to stand up. Don't let me wait any longer. Okay, that's better. Now, those of you who are standing, we're going to take the Possum Lodge oath. Raise both your hands. Place your right hand over your heart. Place your left hand over where your heart would be if God had actually read the instructions. <laughs> and repeat after me. Quando. Quando. Loudly. Quando. Quando. Omni. Omni. Flunkus. Moritati. That's almost Latin for when all else fails, play dead. <laughs> And now continue repeating after me. I'm a man. I can change. If I have to. I guess. Sit down. The story of baptism, whether it be Jesus or our own, is about change. The Old Testament contained messages of hope. And oftentimes that hope in the Old Testament was symbolized by returning from the wilderness. Moses, Elijah, and David all had to flee to the wilderness. The Exodus was a story of the Jewish people who escaped the wilderness of slavery in Egypt. And the Jewish people who received the prophecy from Isaiah that Mark quoted in today's reading. They were in the wilderness of exile. But the prophecy said, there is hope. And prepare the way for that hope. We also know that baptism was a part of Jewish custom at the time. It, was symboli it symbolized the washing away of the old sinful self and arising as a repentant individual. The Essene community carried this principle to what we might think was an extreme. They did it every day. The work at Qumran, where we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, that work has uncovered the community layout, there was a small pool between the bedrooms and the common areas. Each and every day upon arising, the people would go through that pool, the ritual of baptism, and come up to begin their day. This was the baptism that John was proclaiming. Josephus, the historian, said John exhorted the people to an inner moral reform that was symbolized by the external ritual of baptism. The baptism ritual was a mark of divine forgiveness for past transgressions. And the people were motivated to do this, to participate in this, 
by John's reminder that the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, was drawing near. And John the Baptist was being heard. People were responding to his preaching. Now, his theology wasn't threatening to Herod Antipas, but his popularity was. Remember that biblical society was overwhelmingly poor. Likely 95% or even more of the Jewish people were just trying to get enough each day to eat. So any person who became popular with the masses might easily be transformed into the leader of a rebellion. And Herod felt threatened by this. So Herod had John arrested and killed. Now when we as modern day Christians read the story of Jesus' baptism, we do so in the light of the major seasons of the year. We read the story in Advent with an, with an emphasis on preparing the way, preparing for a new word of hope for whatever modern wilderness we might find ourselves in. But baptism also requires that we shed the old and accept the new. So we repent of our sins and accept the grace of forgiveness. And so we also read this story during Lent in preparation for the coming of the resurrection and the promise of new life. But it just doesn't happen. We must change. We must put aside the old sins before we can accept the new grace. And everyone, regardless of age, is welcome to that grace. That's why we baptize infants with adults making the promise for them. But as those children grow and mature, we ask them to make those determinations for themselves. We confirm them as tweens or teenagers. And we ask adults when they join the church to repeat those baptismal vows. Change begins within each of us, individually. And then we join together as community to grow and impact the outside community. We grow together with other congregations in our denomination so that we can have an impact on the larger society. And our denomination joins with other faith traditions so that we can have an impact on our world. But it starts with us. At the back of the sanctuary is the baptismal font. And it has water in it. And every time I enter this room for worship, I touch that water to remind myself of those baptismal vows. And when I bring that understanding to worship, worship holds much more meaning for me. I remember that I'm here in this room not only to receive something, but I'm worshiping in this room because I have a responsibility to also give something, to be a part of something that is bigger than myself. And I invite you to do that every week when you come to worship. Touch the water and be reminded of your baptismal vows. But where I fall down, where I fall short, is that I don't have anything similar that I do at home to start each day. And to find that is the challenge that I have given myself for this week. And I invite you to keep it 
as your challenge as well. As Kathy plays and we take our Play-Doh, think about that challenge. Perhaps if you're artistic, you'll create something like this bowl that will remind you of something you can do each day at home. Or perhaps you'll be just like me and need it like a stress ball because I'm not artistic. But I'm a man. I can change if I have to, I guess. Amen. Join with me in the spirit of prayer. Eternal God, we are people who journey as vessels containing the wellsprings of hope. We share, replenish, and add new waters of hope through the work we do together and the prayers we offer together. We pause this day to reflect upon and to celebrate the movement of the tide in this journey as those waters wash upon our shores, cleansing, forgiving, and calling us back to faithfulness and ministry. We pray that we may share that prophecy of hope with words and actions to those who are in need. We pray for our global community, struggling with war and natural disasters. We pray for those victimized and fearful of violence. We pray for those struggling in poverty. Most particularly, we pray for those individuals that we know personally who need those words and deeds of ours to give them hope this day. For our pastor and her family, and for those that we name in our hearts before you. Creator God, may the waters that covered us at our birth once again remind us of our creation in you. Remind us that we are vessels of the waters of hope 
and your outpourings have power to heal and make whole our bruised world. Let the living waters of creation, womb, baptism, and spirit encircle us that we remember always that we are yours and be thankful. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to join our voices together and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you at this time to consider your stewardship, to consider your support of this church. We are in the summer season. Our attendance is low as people are traveling. We will be traveling at some point too. But our responsibility to support the church remains. I invite you to be generous in that support. The ushers will wait upon you. You also have opportunities to give online, to give electronically, and those appear on the screen. Thank you. of our co-working relationship with you. May we use our lives to lean into your paths, 
into the changes that you have in store for us. Bless these gifts and all the works of our hands to your glory, that working together, we may make this world a better place for all. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hymn of Promise. It's in the hymnal at 707 and also on the screen.